Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast update because we have a winter storm that is going across the northeast right now. We have more Arctic air that is coming out of the north within the next 5 to 10 days. That could break records and we have more snow to talk about also. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So with that being said, here's a look at the latest HRRR model for Thursday afternoon and evening, January 26th, 2023. Actually, technically the 25th, but the model time is January 26th or 01Z. Also, if you want to know the time and date, model perimeter and model type it is on the top right side of the screen above my lovely head so this is 9 p.m eastern standard time on wednesday you can see the snow is coming down there on the bottom right side of the screen that's the current radar and this matches up pretty well with the medium to dark blue colors indicating moderate to heavy snowfall that is currently coming down across the area but if you go further south it is all rain, like northern um, New Jersey, central southern New Jersey. It is raining pretty good, and it will continue doing so for a few more hours. We also had some severe weather down here across the Carolinas, but that is out of here by tonight as colder, more stable air moves in in the wake of this cold front that swings through. So this continues all the way through, say, uh, 6 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. We do have some convective snow showers that could pop up um, overnight tonight over Kentucky and Tennessee, but otherwise further east along the eastern seaboard, looking pretty dry, a little much colder or so because of the colder air that comes in in the wake of these systems. Some snowfall that could be expected here, some lake effect coming off of Lake Michigan over northern and central uh, Indiana. Indiana, so more additional snowfall accumulations are possible with this and this continues all the way throughout the day tomorrow so snow in some areas like West Virginia portions of southern and southeastern Ohio and also continuing for Tennessee but look at the Northeast looking better than it did today with skies clearing out maybe some sunshine out of this uh, in the wake of the system and this continues all the way through Thursday afternoon with some convective showers hours not particularly heavy but it's gonna you know you're gonna notice it out there there might be times where the sun comes up or comes out I should say and there will be times where it snows but not terribly heavy which is good news so if you're doing anything outdoors if you're doing any driving maybe the morning time it could be a little dicey but by the afternoon and evening it should end up being better than um, it would be tomorrow or tomorrow morning and then it was um, prior to that. All right. So going forward here, all the way out to Friday early morning, another passing weather system moves into uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, northern uh, Illinois, into Indiana. Again, this is not particularly intense. This is going to bring maybe another inch, maybe a couple of inches of snow at the very most. It's going to bring in more colder air in its wake, and that's going to really set the stage of what's to come by the weekend into early to the middle of next week, where we might see some historic record low daytime highs and record low nighttime lows as well for the northern plains could be one of the worst arctic outbreaks possibly so far this season now taking a look at our medium range weather forecast on the latest euro model that came out at 12z this late morning early afternoon this is the complete run because we're going to look into the future because this may not be the only snowstorm you deal with there might be more coming in behind this one for this weekend into early next week. So there's a winter storm that's moving out of the area. We showed you that on the high res models. We also showed you this on the um, high res models too at the early part of the period. Moving into the Great Lakes by Friday evening, by Friday afternoon perhaps. This would be about six to seven o'clock central and eastern time on January the 27th through the 28th but again it is not particularly a very impactful snowstorm by any means again maybe an inch or so of snowfall at the very most maybe two inches right along the coast here of lake michigan but otherwise really not going to be an impactful system by any means at all it's going to be after that where we might have to watch the pattern because the pattern is going to be changing more for the colder weather that you have not seen much this year and it looks like 
it's gonna want to stick around for a lot longer than what we had back on Christmas Eve that Christmas Arctic air mass, my goodness, that was really bad. This one, not quite as bad, maybe pretty bad, but it's going to also last for quite some time. So going into the latter part of the weekend, here comes the cold Arctic air and also some snow across the Pacific Northwest like Oregon and Washington. We got Idaho here. We got Montana and Wyoming. You see this band of snow. This is going to demarcate where we have that Arctic front that is going to be draping across the area. We also got more snow chances coming for northern uh, um, portion there of Iowa as well as Illinois into say Michigan. Again, it's moisture starved system here. Not a lot of moisture with this so again maybe an additional one to two inches of snow at the very most but here further south it's going to likely be rain so any snow that you got and it might stick around for a little bit will likely be melting all away because of the warmer temperatures along to go with that rain that is going to be falling but this is going to continue this pattern not going anywhere by early part of next week say by monday the last the second to last day of january you can see there is your arctic air cold dense air that is going to be ushering in out of the north and we'll be looking at the ensembles on that in just a second we got more precipitation that's going to be moving over california but again this system is really moisture starved not going to be a whole lot of moisture anywhere maybe between a hundredth of an inch to maybe a tenth of an inch at the very most for california so if you all are hoping we're going to get some big time rain by early next week not going to be a big deal at all very weak system but it's going to bring in a lot more colder air instead it's going to be the temperatures with that system then say a lot of the rain the snow for the higher elevations right so uh, this continues all the way into the middle of next week again what we were talking about uh, towards the beginning of this video we're gonna have to watch for these systems where they develop what their tracks are do they get dynamic because if they do we might see a lot more problems heavier snow stronger winds maybe more freezing rain because at the end of the day we are dealing with a mixed bag of very cold arctic canadian air to the north and subtropical warmer air to the south. And so we got some extremes going on here. Too warm south, too cold to the north. And when these meet, we can get a lot of heavy rain, freezing rain, snow, that sort of thing across the Midwest and the Northeast. And this continues. There's one impulse of moisture. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty here. So please do not take my word on this. Um, right now, models don't do well when we have stretched out systems like this because if the colder air sags more further south, maybe the snow is further south than further north. We can see the uncertainty here. If we just look at the zero Z yesterday, we can see that was a lot further north. Well, now the 12Z run, well, it's a little further south. Does this continue? Do we see a southerly trend continue? We just don't know yet. So I wanna make myself clear here. We are seeing big weather pattern changes coming next week, more for the colder Arctic air. There's bigger confidence on that, lesser confidence on exactly what this will mean as far as snow, rain, wind, and other variables out there, okay? More worry about the temperatures than say this um, snowfall and rainfall. We will have disturbances, but right now it's a little uncertain exactly how strong they will be. All right, this goes into the end of the forecast. So by the end of next week, by February the 2nd and the 3rd, very cold Arctic air, this Canadian high really uh, in place. Well, not so much a Canadian high anymore. It's more of a central US high, but it came from Canada. So a large pull up. Uh, a pool of cold air going to be kind of lingering around for a while here over the Midwest and that's really going to kick start the colder air that's going to be in place. As far as your snowfall totals this is what they are looking like over the next five to ten days and we can see this clearly again um, there's no specific details on an individual individual storm sorry tongue twister there so I'm just going to kind of put this all together in a 10 day format so what you see here, 1% chance that it actually happens. Please don't take my word. So anywhere between maybe uh, one to three, actually we should use a 10 in one ratio. Maybe we'll use that. It depends on 
Actually, since it's going to be colder, we'll use the Kachira towards the end of the forecast, but we can see here additional snow or total snowfall accumulations across the northeast in the Great Lakes, anywhere between maybe one to close to two feet of snow in the next 10 days. And of course, over the northern tier of the United States, um, as well as the Pacific Northwest, anywhere between maybe about 12 to 18 inches of snowfall with some of the mountains maybe getting one to three feet of snowfall. But again, um, this is going to change. I want to make that clear. I don't want to just spit out three or four feet and you all expect it in 10 days, right? Because there's going to be several systems that move through and we cannot track a one system this go around. Now, another big impact that this is going to bring is the big pattern change coming in. The temperatures are going to plunge. They are going to get well below average by the latter part of the weekend into early to middle of next week be feeling like winter for a lot of you and you will be complaining about how cold it's going to be and so this is a look at the european ensemble or euro ensemble forecast temperature anomaly same as like the operational with the color coat um kind of key here blue and green colors indicate temperatures well below average while orange and red and kind of grayish um kind of this pingy red color indicates temperatures are going to be well above average so let's go forward in time and see with what we got the next one to two days on again this is a one day average temperature anomaly to make this kind of go faster instead of just looking at a specific time so below average temperatures on a one day average basis for the deep south for the four corners let's go forward this is when the pattern changes folks by sunday into monday look at this much colder air moving on across california the pacific northwest the northern tier of the united states it is going to be warmer than normal on a one day average standpoint over the deep south over portions of the great lakes like lake erie lake ontario the northeast going to see kind of spring like temperatures and that's going to continue all the way through the next five uh five to seven days you can see much colder temperatures are anticipated here on the ensemble and this continues all the way through the next 10 to 11 days, well below average temperatures. Finally, that colder air does get into the Northeast. So you haven't seen much winter yet this season, right? Because the pattern has not allowed it. You're gonna see it. It's coming. It's going to be coming by the middle to the end of next week, and it's going to be pretty significant. We're seeing temperatures here 10 to 15 degrees below average, and that continues. Maybe some warmer weather towards the very end of the ensemble forecast through the next 14 to 15 days. When we take a look at our five-day average forecast here, we can see it is even really showing up here. So over the, that five-day period, um, say five to 10 days, temperatures could be 25 to 40 degrees below average. That is very significant. And over the five-day period here, 10 to 15 days, looking pretty cold. All right, so um, let me see if I could actually, we're gonna just do the air temperature forecast here on the ensemble just to make this go a little quicker because again uh, we want to look at the average here and we can see clearly uh, temperatures are going to be falling taking a tumble for monday into tuesday temperatures in the single digits and negative territory across the midwest the northern plains right down there into the negative 10 to negative 15 degree range and that could continue for a while all the way throughout the next 10 days so much colder weather is coming just not in the next couple of days all right now let's take a look at your six or six to ten day temperature anomaly or temperature uh chance forecast i should say to put it in simple words temperatures are very likely to be below average i mean look at this in the dakotas in minnesota you have a 100 percent chance you're gonna have temperatures below average that is certainly expected there is no turning back it is all in agreement that this is going to be very significant we could be talking about very close to historic records uh with this arctic air mass that settles in um likely above to well above perhaps for the southeast including for florida so it's not coming in 10 days for you all it'll be very warm there this continues over the next 
uh, 8 to 14 days through February the 8th, below average to likely below average for the Great Lakes for the Midwest, including for the West, going to stay below average, stay nice and cool, we need it, and then for the Southeast, it's going to remain uh, likely above average, so really n winter's not coming towards Florida anytime soon, which I guess is good news for Florida Floridians, another tongue twister, that like this warm sunshine. Precipitation forecast, likely above for the Pacific Northwest, uh, leaning above average for the Midwest and for the Eastern Seaboard, leaning below for the Northern tier of the United States, and leaning below average for, say, portions of Texas, as well as, again, say, New Mexico. That continues into the 8 to 14 day uh, period here. You can see for the Pacific Northwest, still likely above, leaning above average for the Southeast and for the Mid-Atlantic Coast, and leaning below average for Arizona and for New Mexico throughout the next 8 to 14 days running through February the 2nd through the 8th and this was issued today so we can clearly see with what you might be expecting here as far as your probability chances for the next 14 days. Well anyways I sure hope you enjoyed the video if you did please consider subscribing slapping that like button also slapping the bell notification icon and leave a comment in the section below this video it really does help out a lot folks and you guys have been doing quite awesome at keeping up to date on my YouTube channel every time I make weather content. My goal here is to upload every single day. That's the goal here because well, there's a lot to talk about as far as what's coming, especially for the latter part of the weekend into early next week. It could be very cold and pretty stinking nasty for some locations. So make sure if you haven't already, share, like, and subscribe for latest notifications and updates on this YouTube channel as well as check out the Mesovort WX um, uh, website. There's a link in the description below to that. It is completely free to join today. But anyways, I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather content.